Chapter One of The Last Trail. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mike Vendetti, MikeVendetti.com. The Last Trail by Zane Gray. Chapter One. Twilight of a certain summer day many years ago shaded softly down over the wild Ohio Valley, bringing keen anxiety to a traveler on the lonely river trail. He had expected to reach Fort Henry with his party on this night, thus putting a welcome end to the long, rough, hazardous journey through the wilderness. But the swift oncoming dusk made it imperative to halt. The narrow, forest-skirted trail, difficult to follow in broad daylight, apparently led into gloomy aisles in the woods. His guide had abandoned him that morning, making excuse that his services were no longer needed. His teamster was new to the frontier, and altogether the situation caused him much uneasiness. I wouldn't so much mind another night in camp if the guide had not left us, he said in a low tone to the teamster. That worthy shook his shaggy head and growled while he began unhitching the horses. Uncle, said a young man who had clambered out from the wagon, we must be within a few miles of Fort Henry. How do you know we're near the fort? interrupted the teamster. Or safe either, for that matter. I don't know this country. The guide assured me we could easily make Fort Henry by sundown. That guide, I tell you, Mr. Shepherd. Not so loud. Do not alarm my daughter, cautioned the man who had been called Shepherd. Did you notice anything queer about that guide? asked the teamster, lowering his voice. Did you see how uneasy he was last night? Did it strike you he left us in a hurry, kind of excited like, in spite of his offhand manner? "'Yes, he acted odd, or so it seemed to me,' replied Shepard. "'How about you, Will?' "'Now that I think of it, I believe he was queer. He behaved like a man who expected somebody or feared something might happen. I fancied, however, that it was simply the manner of a woodsman.' "'Well, in my opinion,' said the teamster, in a gruff whisper, "'he was in a hurry to be a-goin', and wouldn't take no advice. The fur trader at Fort Pitt didn't give this guy Jinx no good send-off.' Is anyone well known around Pitt, except he could handle a knife some? What is your opinion? asked Shepard, as the teamster paused. Well, the valley below Pitt is full of renegades, outlaws, and hoss thieves. The Redskins ain't so bad as they used to be, but these white fellows were worse than ever. This guy Jenks might be in with them. That's all. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope so. The way he left us looks bad. We won't borrow trouble if we have come all this way without seeing either Indian or outlaw. In fact, without incident, I feel certain we can perform the remainder of the journey in safety. Then Mr. Shepard raised his voice. Here, Helen, you lazy girl, come out of that wagon. We want some supper. Well, you gather some firewood, and we'll soon give this gloomy little glen a more cheerful aspect. As Mr. Shepard turned toward the canvas-covered wagon, a girl leaped out, lightly down beside him. She was nearly as tall as he. Is this Fort Henry, she asked, cheerily beginning to dance around him. Where's the inn? I'm so hungry. How glad I am to get out of that wagon. I'd like to run. Isn't this a lonesome, lovely spot? The campfire soon crackled with hiss and sputter. Fragrant wood smoke filled the air. Steaming kettle and savory steaks of venison cheered the hungry travelers, making them forget for the time the desertion of their guide and the fact that they might be lost. The last glow faded entirely out of the western sky. Night enveloped the forest, and the little glade was a bright spot in the gloom. The flickering light showed Mr. Shepard to be a well-preserved old man with gray hair and ruddy, kindly face. The nephew had a boyish, frank expression. The girl was a splendid specimen of womanhood. Her large, laughing eyes were as dark as the shadows beneath the trees. Suddenly a quick start on Helen's part interrupted the merry flow of conversation. She sat bolt upright, with half-averted face. "'Cousin, what is the matter?' asked Will quickly. Helen remained motionless. "'My dear,' said Mr. Shepherd sharply. "'I heard a footstep,' she whispered, pointing with trembling finger toward the impenetrable blackness beyond the campfire. All could hear a soft patter on the leaves. Then distinct footfalls broke the silence. The tired teamster raised his shaggy head and glanced fearfully around the glade. Mr. Shepard and Will glazed doubtfully towards the foliage, but Helen did not change her position. The travelers appeared stricken by the silence and solitude of the place. 
faint hum of insects and the low moan of the night wind seemed accentuated by the almost painful stillness a panther most likely suggested shepherd in a voice which he intended should be reassuring i saw one today slinking along the trail i'd better get my gun from the wagon said will how dark and wild it is here exclaimed helen nervously i believe i was frightened perhaps i fancied it and there again listen uh -huh. two tall figures emerged from the darkness into the circle of light and with swift supple steps gained the campfire before any of the travelers had time to move they were indians and the brandishing of their tomahawks proclaimed that they were hostile Ooh, grunted the taller savage as he looked down upon the defenseless frightened group as the menacing figures stood in the glare of the fire gazing at the party with shifty eyes they presented a frightful appearance fierce lineaments all the more so because of bars of paint and hideous shaven heads adorned with tufts of hair holding a single feather sinewy copper-colored limbs suggestive of action and endurance the general aspect of untamed ferocity appalled the travelers and chilled their blood grunts and chuckles manifested the satisfaction with which the indians fell upon the half-finished supper they caused it to vanish with astonishing celerity and resembled wolves rather than human beings in their greediness helen looked timidly around as if hoping to see those who would aid and the savages regarded her with ill humor a movement on the part of any member of the group caused muscular hands to steal towards the tomahawks suddenly the larger savage clutched his companion's knee then lifting his hatchet shook it with a significant gesture in shepherd's face at the same time putting a finger to his lips to enjoin silence both indians became statuesque in their immobility they crouched in an attitude of listening with heads bent on one side nostrils dilated and mouths open one two three moments passed the silence of the forest appeared to be unbroken but ears as keen as those of a deer had detected some sound the larger savage dropped noiselessly to the ground where he lay stretched out with his ear to the ground the other remained immovable only his beady eyes gave signs of life and these covered every point finally the big savage rose silently pointed down the dark trail and strode out of the circle of light his companion followed close at his heels the two disappeared in the black shadows like specters as silently as they had come wow breathed helen i am immensely relieved exclaimed will what do you make of such strange behavior shepherd asked of the teamster i suspect they got wind of somebody most likely that guy and he'll be back again if they ain't it's cause they got switched off by some signs or tokens skeered perhaps by the scent of the wind hardly had he ceased speaking when again the circle of light was invaded by stalking forms i thought so here come the skulking varmints whispered the teamster but he was wrong a deep calm voice spoke the single word friends the two men in the brown garb of woodsmen approached one approached the travelers the other remained in the background leaning upon a long black rifle thus exposed to the glare of the flames the foremost woodsman presented a singularly picturesque figure his costume was fringed with buckskin of the border fully six feet tall this lithe-limbed young giant had something of the wild free grace of the indian in his posture he surveyed the wondering travelers with dark grave eyes did the reddies do any mischief he asked no they didn't harm us replied shepherd they ate our supper and slipped off into the woods without so much as touching one of us but indeed sir we are mighty glad to see you will echoed this sentiment and helen's big eyes were fastened upon the stranger in welcome and wonder we saw your fire blazing through the twilight and came up just in time to see the engines make off might they not hide in the bushes and shoot us asked will who had listened to many a border story at fort pitt it seems as if we'd make good targets in this light the gravity of the woodsman's face relaxed will you pursue them asked helen they've melted into the night shadows long ago he replied who is your guide i hired him at fort pitt he left us suddenly this morning a big man with black beard and bushy eyebrows 
bit of his ear had been shot or cut out shepherd replied jenks one of bing leggett's border hawks you have his name right and who may bing leggett be he's not law jenks has been trying to lead you into a trap likely he expected those injuns to show up a day or two ago something went wrong with the plan i reckon maybe he was waiting for five shawnees and maybe he'll never see three of em again something suggestive cold and grim in the last words did not escape the listeners how far are we from fort henry asked shepherd eighteen miles the crow flies longer by trail treachery exclaimed the old man we were no more than that this morning it is indeed fortunate that you found us i take it you are from fort henry and will guide us there i am an old friend of colonel zane's he will appreciate any kindness you may show us of course you may know him i'm jonathan zane shepherd suddenly realized that he was facing the most celebrated scout on the border in revolutionary times zane's fame had extended even to the far atlantic colonies and your companion asked shepherd with keen interest he guessed what might be told border lore coupled jonathan zane with a strange and terrible character a border nemesis a mysterious shadowy elusive man whom few pioneers ever saw but of whom all knew wetzel answered zane with one accord the travelers gazed curiously at zane's silent companion in the dim background of the glow cast by the fire he stood a gigantic figure dark quiet and yet with something intangible in his shadowy outline suddenly he appeared to merge into the gloom as if he really were a phantom a warning hist came from the bushes with one swift kick zane scattered the campfire the travelers waited with bated breath they could hear nothing save the beating of their own hearts they could not even see each other better go to sleep came in zane's calm voice what a relief it was we'll keep watching at daybreak guide you to fort henry End of chapter 1